We are uh, finishing up uh, our series today of talking with some of the uh, experienced gentlemen and hearing some of their stories from the pipe business. And uh, we're going to finish up here with uh, 98 years young, Mr. Al Karchmer. You ready? 98 and a half. 98 and a half. Got it. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. All right. You sit tight. What year did you start in the pipe business? Well, my first year was about 19... When was the war over? World War II. World War II, 1945? Well, that was my first attempt with my family business. Your family business? What, yeah, they were in the pipe business. What was uh, the name of the... Uh, Cartridge Pipe and Supply. And that was based out of where? Oklahoma City. Okay. Because that was when I came back from the war. I finished up at college, got my degree, and had nothing better to do but go to work somewhere. So the family business was the first stop. What was that like, uh, the, the steel pipe business in Oklahoma City in 1945? I can't remember. <laughs> well, it was uh, it was pretty active here. There was a whole well, a business that was going on, and everybody, most most people were in the scrap business that were in metal, because it was open to them when they came in from from uh, from Russia and those places. But when the oil started, then many of them switched over to pipe, and that was true of uh, my family also. So it was a pretty good time the uh, pipe business. So they kind of transitioned from the scrap business yeah. into the steel pipe business. Yeah. Now, how yeah. long had your family been, you know, uh, in business as Karchmer Pipe in Oklahoma? Well, they were in business as Karchmer Iron until 19, about 1916, 17, and then uh, went into the pipe business, I guess, uh, right after the war. Well, no, before the war, they went in the pipe business. Okay. And what was your first job at Karchmer Pipe? What did you do? Were you out in the yard? or were you I was at the yard learning, although I had I'd been exposed when I was younger. I would go to the office, and so I wasn't, a, wasn't completely green, but I had a lot to learn, and uh, I spent time at the office mainly. And I had my uncle was in partnership with my father, so uh, I got got it from both sides. Did you have any other siblings or cousins uh, working Most, there as well? Not in Oklahoma City. Most of our family was either in the scrap business in different parts of the country or in the pipe business. So I came about it naturally. What were some of the first uh, early jobs out in the pipe yard that you remember uh, taking? Well, going out and learning the different sizes. Uh, at that time, they were shop, they were threading and coloring and cleaning pipes, so I learned something about that and did some of that myself. And just in general, learning the inventory and took a few sales when they came in. My first sale, we had a uh, string of four-inch pipe, and I got the customer. I was awarded to be able to sell to them, and that was my first experience. I sold them the pipe. They took it, and we didn't get paid for it. And, <laughs> and that was uh, pretty... Uh, Pretty uh, mind uh, for my for my first experience, so it was a good experience because I learned you better be careful who you look or you sell to. You better know who you're selling to. And when you say a lot of the pipe was being threaded and such, was it going to the oil patch at that time? No, uh, we were not in my in my uh, father's company did not go into the oil patch too much. It was mainly structural. I think the feeling, and I also, after I started my own, 
the feeling was that uh, oil goods, uh, it was a little riskier, needed more money for inventory, and uh, there was a lot of competition because of the oil fields around Oklahoma. So I opted to go in the structural part of it, and I'm glad I did. Very good. The, um, now, when you came back from the war and started with you know, the family business in 1945, Karchmer Pipe, were you in with the family business for quite some time, or did was there No, a- I was only uh, for about 18 months or two years. And when I um, got out of the Army, kind of the promised land was California. Everybody was kind of moving from Oklahoma and different places because they thought that was that was a place to be. So I got the bug and I decided I wanted to go to California. And it was uh, a little difficult, as it is with many people, uh, being in the family business, particularly with an uncle and my father. There was, uh, uh, it was a difficult uh, time. So I made the decision to go to California, and I had a place, a, a, a firm that was in the aluminum business to go to. So out, that, in, out in uh, the in LA area? LA, yeah, I was, he was stationed in, in the LA area. And this was about when, 1947, 1946? 1946, you know. You were still a young guy. Yeah, I was pretty young. What did you do in the uh, uh, with the company, the uh, aluminum company? I was in sales there, and that was a different period. I learned a lot. I'm glad I glad I went there because uh, I learned a great deal being in another company and being under supervision of other people. But I was mainly out in the field, calling on people in those days. You didn't use the phone that much like you do today. You went and saw people and spent almost every day out calling on people. So it was a whole different ball game, really. Sure. So uh, in this day and age, they call that an outside salesman. And, yeah. And you're yeah, that's not as common today as it was back then. Right. And was it aluminum pipe or shapes, sheets, that kind aluminum of thing? Aluminum well, it was originally, it was a coil, what we call coil top, and then we got into tubing and pipe, and then did some of that. Very good. How long were you out there? In the well, I went out in 46. I came back to Oklahoma in uh, about 76 uh, or 7, 70, 70, about 76. Okay. So you were out there for... 25 years. Yeah. It's a long time. I fought traffic for that long a time. <laughs> Didn't quite care for the traffic. No, that was not a not a, a good uh, place to be. Gotcha. So, 1976, what happens? You coming back? Well, I came back and uh, looked around for something to do, and. My uh, brother-in-law had kind of inherited my father's pipe business, so I worked out a deal where I went back into that, but uh, that only lasted about a year. We didn't see eye to eye, and I decided I needed my own business. I always wanted my own business anyway. So uh, I separated and started up on my own. When you started out, out on your own, was it International Pipe and Supply? Yeah. I started from scratch and had about $20,000 and bought some inventory and uh, found a place and I had decided that I would do everything on a um, on a hired basis. So I uh, contracted with everybody from 
a girl in the office to uh, a place where I uh, opened a business. I rented everything, trucks and all. So uh, I had read a book where somebody had done that, and it had sent, it's kind of a feel to me. I wanted to try it, and I'm glad I did. It was a good experience, but then it had the living stations too, because you were kept busy doing many things that were in the way of growing a company. So uh, eventually, I, uh, when my son graduated and he decided to come into the business, I decided to, to uh, pretty much go on my own. And uh, so uh, your son, we're talking about Don, of course, Don no. Karchmer, and when he graduated from college, uh, you guys uh, uh, kind of started really building the international pipe uh, no. brand at that time no. here in Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. What are uh, uh, some of the uh, changes that you've seen, you know, over the years? You had mentioned that, you know, back in the 40s and 50s out in L.A., no. you didn't use a telephone very much. No, and, but uh, much of it was done on a personal basis, and uh, I still am of the opinion that that personal contact was very important and still is an important factor in the learning process and in developing relationships. Uh, you just can't do it talking on the phone to somebody that much, but that's the way it, uh, it, it developed and people didn't have the time to go out like they used to. Distances were so great that you could spend most of the time in your car traveling. So uh, each one had its pros and cons. And, you know, when I was taking a tour of International Pipe here today, I, uh, in your office, I noticed a, a big computer. What, did you ever think you would see the day when you were working on a computer? And no, I remember uh, when the fax machine came into being, fax machine for was making copies and sending to somebody, I didn't think that was going to be much of a deal. So, look what's happened. <laughs> yeah, that was just with the fax machine. Yeah. Yeah. And that became obsolete. Right. It sure did. And your, uh, this whole cell phone uh, deal, that uh, kind of just uh, took over here uh, in the last uh, 10, 20 years as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, we talk about changes that you've witnessed. If, if, uh, if you could go back in time now and go back to the times that you started in the steel pipe business, um, what advice would you give yourself? Well, as I mentioned, uh, I did everything pretty much myself. And I was, I was okay for a while, but I would not have spent as much time I would have gotten more into sales and into areas where it would be more productive and more profitable. So uh, I spent probably too much time on on detail work that was not that uh, productive. And I would say I would advise somebody to build relationships that was important even today to do as much as possible to build good relationships with people because that's, uh, that's who you did business with and that's where the money was going to come from and with deals with people. If someone were just starting out in the business, what would you say was the secret to the success that you've had? Well, I would say persistence for one thing. Uh, and if you didn't feel strongly that you wanted to have a business and to do business and to try to succeed, then you shouldn't get into it. You should work for somebody else. Uh, you had to have a strong, strong desire. Because you hit bad spots as well as good spots and you need to get through them. And I don't recall any time that I started on my own that I wasn't happy or wasn't satisfied that I was doing the right thing, even though it was, it was, uncomfortable and bad at some times.
What was one of the more you know toughest time periods? Was it moving back from L.A. to Oklahoma? No, no, that was I. I got very tired of L.A. because of traffic traveling and that, and I was very happy moving uh, moving back into Oklahoma. And uh, I can't say I was not un, I was not unhappy uh, even in the bad times with the business. Uh, uh, I found it found it very satisfying. Very good. Um, the NASPD. Um, I've seen you at a few conventions uh -huh. uh, over the years. I, we just talked a few minutes ago uh, about. Uh, I remember. I think the first convention I was at was in California. What was that? It was a. Uh, La Costa. Where? La Costa. La Costa. And. That was quite. That was quite an interesting place because a lot, a lot of the mafia <laughs> attended uh, that area, and uh, I guess it was appropriate that the NSVT decided to go there. <laughs> but that was uh, that was a lot of fun. That uh, first was, it, was that the first convention there? Or no? no, I think. Uh, I think that was not the first convention, oh. but I think it was like the third or fourth. Yeah, the third or fourth. It was. And it was, the conventions were different in those days. It was pretty much on a social level. It uh, developed into a very serious and a very uh, learning uh, organization, and uh, I think has become quite an important factor in our business. To the extent, it was uh, like most conventions in early days, it was quite social. And you went to it to see people and to, and to have a good time. Right, right. And um, what are some of the other more memorable conventions that you might remember? I, uh, I think I, I remember, uh, I think uh, several that were in, around in Houston. We seemed to go to Houston a number of times. And there was another California, which was uh, quite interesting. Where I did a lot of beach time and not so much the other time, but I remember I think Donald was in the company then, and we had I had a car out there and we couldn't get the car started, and we were pushing the car, and just about the time we were pushing it, a busload of the uh, NASVD personnel <laughs> were there and were pointing at us and laughing at us for pushing the car. <laughs> so that was quite an experience that convention. Some of the, uh, who are some of the characters with the NASPD? Some old friends that you used to like to hang out with or? Well, I can't remember names too much now, but uh, I guess many of the old timers are not there anymore. Right, right. Very good. I know uh, we talked about uh, you being out at the Coeur d'Alene Convention here uh, eight or nine years ago and um, we're we're hoping that you're able to make it back out there uh, for the next one. Would be in a couple of years. Don't hold your breath. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, would you like to speak at all about some of the other uh, guys that we had here today? We had quite a yeah. quite a group. Yeah, it was. It's quite interesting, and what's what struck me as being very important is that you hear a lot of uh, comment in books and in people in general, about how difficult and how maybe sometimes uh, you're sorry you went into a business or you all the problems you had and all, but I didn't hear anything like that, and I myself cannot comment that way. I think everybody here is, uh, has had a very good experience and has done well in their uh, Pipe uh, experience, and uh, I was glad to hear that. And I think that's true of many, many of our people. That uh, it's been uh, it's been very rewarding. I agree. I agree. And uh, Don tells me that uh, you and Ben Benny Shanker still see each other on a fairly regular basis. Yeah, yeah. We go go way back. I knew his brother pretty well, and. Uh, I saw, I saw Benny come up from the very beginning, and he uh, has an exceptional reputation 
in Oklahoma and otherwise for his business and in general the way he is. Very good. Is there anything that, a, a question that I didn't ask? Uh, something that, uh, that you want to tell us about, talk about? Is there anything that pops into your mind? No, except uh, I'm glad to see that there are older people like myself who are still continuing to be active in the business and who are still uh, satisfied with with what they do and what they can do. And uh, it's been it's been interesting and as I mentioned, uh, rewarding. And uh, I can't complain. <laughs> And nobody would listen if I could, so. Yeah, that's right. <laughs>